Through two years, the PLL College Draft has produced hits on offense. Nice move by Grant Amen. Wow. Brian Costabile. That's two. Defense. Punishing stick check. In the crease. Crowder. An absolute wall. And at the X. Demolishing hit by Connor Farrell. But this year's class is different. Loaded with players who have excelled in college and expect more as pros. Potential stars, future starters, all waiting to hear their names called. The eight head coaches are lined up with plans in place, ready to enhance their roster, ready to resume their battle for the championship crown. The 2021 PLL College Draft is officially on the clock. Welcome to the 2021 PLL College Draft presented by champion Paul Burmeister, Ryan Boyle inside Studio 2 here at NBC Sports. And as you can see, all eight PLL head coaches with us virtually throughout the next hour to make their picks, of course, and also to help us get to know them. The talent level, especially at the top of this draft, has created such a buzz for this night for months now. But a new twist to the conversation here, Ryan, Lee, uh, Ryan at the top, should it be Jeff Teat out of Cornell at one or Michael Sowers from Duke? I don't really think you make a bad pick, and I'm not trying to be diplomatic there. I, I think these are two franchise-altering players. Um, so it's really just a matter of your evaluation of their skill set, their fit, and their projected longevity. Wonderful players. Their production at Duke, Cornell, and also at Princeton for Michael Sowers speaks to that. What are the differences you see in the two? I think when you look at Sowers, he's that prototypical ex-attack, but he wants the ball in his stick. So he's going to dodge and then initiate and feed, kind of get everybody else involved. So he's kind of a style on himself, upon himself, whereas Jeff Teat, more versatility there. So he can play with the ball. He can play without the ball. He can, he's got a box background, so he can play in the two-man game. He can go inside. So he fits a lot of different styles. And as we've talked about a lot recently, another name has emerged for best player in this class. That's Maryland's Jared Bernhardt. He leads the nation in goals. Really a next-level combination of athleticism and playmaking. But he's made it clear that he intends to play Division II college football in the fall with the hopes of earning a chance to make an NFL roster in 2022. If he does follow that plan, any team that drafts him tonight will not retain his rights if and when he decides to play in the PLL. Ryan. Yeah, it's, it's tough. I, I have him as the number one player in, in college lacrosse, and, and I think he would be the number one pick in this draft if he was coming out, hands, hands down. Um, so really it's just a matter of kind of that risk-reward proposition. If you think he's only going to play kind of one year of college football, you know, is he worth a pick because then you, then you have him. Meanwhile, if he plays those two years and you kind of come up empty. So it's, it's going to be kind of interesting uh, to see kind of if and when he goes off the board. Uh, walking me right to my next question, do you think we hear his name tonight? I, I do. Uh, we will keep an eye on that. Ryan's uh, top prospects. We talked about number one, Jeff Teat, number two, Michael Sowers. We all know about TD Erland and all he's done at the faceoff. What are your TD thoughts heading into the draft? I, I think you're looking at three teams that I, that I, when I look at them, they have a need at the faceoff position. You know, that's the, the Archers, the Chaos, the Redwoods. You could also make a claim maybe some other squads could upgrade there. So that's the one guy the draft is going to kind of take on a different flavor once he gets kind of taken because a lot of eyes are on that pick specifically. A couple of rules to keep in mind here as the four rounds play out. If a team drafts a player who returns to school to play lacrosse, and remember they were all granted an extra year of eligibility because of COVID restrictions, they do not retain his rights. With thoughts of Jared Bernhardt in mind, if a drafted player does not enter the PLL and does not play again in college, the team retains his rights for two years only. Here's the first round order. It's noteworthy that it begins and ends with Atlas. One way of appreciating what they have tonight. For this week's NFL draft, the New York Jets have the most picks in the top 100 with five. The Atlas own five of the top 17 picks here tonight. That's how we say hello to Ben Rubior, the Atlas second year head coach. Uh, ben, your evaluation process has been unique due to the sheer volume of your early picks. What's it been like for you? It's been it's been a fun process. Um, it has obviously there's a lot of really good players out there and uh, and it's been exciting. It's obviously been difficult, but, um, you know, it's been a process that that myself and my assistant coach has been working through. And uh, and those there are players out there that I think we're we're all really excited to see, you know, how they how they progress to the next level and how well how much they can help our team. All right, Ben, time to make the first overall selection of the 2021 PLL College Draft. So with the number one pick, the Atlas Lacrosse Club selects Jeff Teat, attack Cornell. 
Crafty, creative, unselfish, led Cornell in scoring four consecutive years. Got to ask you the question. Uh, we've talked about the comparisons with Teed and Michael Sowers. What was the deciding factor for you to go with Jeff instead of Michael? Uh, Jeff is a guy that I got to uh, I got to coach in an all-star game as a senior. I watched him play in the world championships. I thought his performance against the best players in the world and uh, being the leading scorer for Team Canada um, made my decision one where I was pretty excited. I think this is a guy that can do a lot of things. I think uh, I think that versatility, I think his toughness, I think uh, his playmaking ability in a number of different ways uh, you know, makes him my number one pick. More help coming for the Atlas, Ryan. They have my five more selections. How do you like what they did at one? I, I love this pick. Uh, this is going to be a kid that is a professional lacrosse player, uh, wholeheartedly dedicated to the game. Then you look at the, the Atlas roster, just kind of some of that fit. You know, I think he blends beautifully with Eric Law at, at attack there. And then you look at kind of the Atlas top midfielders, Costa Beal, uh, Dennis, Crawley, Adams, all, all right-handed players. So he kind of balances the field a little bit, you know, him kind of taking up that left side as well. Also got Dan Beccaro in the entry draft out of Georgetown. He'll be a nice piece there too. That brings us to the Water Dogs at two. They were competitive in their first season last summer in the bubble, but they did struggle to find wins. Now Andy Copeland is up to make the first of his three selections tonight. Andy, good to see you. Go ahead and take it away. Sure thing. You too, Paul. At uh, at number two of the Water Dogs Lacrosse Slo uh, Club, we're going to select Michael Sowers, attackman, Duke University. Incredible blend of quickness, vision, and playmaking. How thrilled are you that you end up with him at two? Yeah, I feel really good about it. I mean, we were we were pretty intentional in the entry draft, uh, having a defensive minded focus, with the understanding, of, you know, there were some pretty remarkable attackmen that we'd be able to see in the college draft. And uh, and I'm I'm a huge fan of Michael's. Have been for a long time. Love that he played in both the Princeton and Duke systems, uh, coached by those staffs. Love just his balance as a, as a goal scorer and distributor, right and left hand, ability to play above and below goal line. I think there's a lot to really like here. Thinking about the offense of Andy's group there with the Water Dogs, Ryan, they scored the fewest points in the bubble. Remember, they traded for Ryan Brown, gave up a second round pick, so offensive help on the way. Yeah, and you beat me to the punch. The happiest guy, other than Coach Copeland, is Ryan Brown right now. You know, he's got to be absolutely thrilled about this pick, but the Water Dogs at times struggle to generate offense. You insert Sowers, give him the ball, and he's going to be able to win that one on one matchup more often than not with that lightning quickness. Get in the ball, let him do his thing, and he's going to make everybody around him better and watch out for shooters you know, like, like a Ryan Brown or maybe a Wes Berg yeah. and McIntosh. A lot of off-ball guys just got a lot happier. In one huge way, the draft for all these teams is all about improvement. The most improved team, year one to year two, that was Chrome under the direction of first-year head coach Tim Sudan. Tim is back for year two, and he's now ready to make pick number three. Tim, just like last draft, you win the award for the most interesting background, so congrats there it doesn't come with an extra pick but you do get to make the third pick right now yeah, i appreciate that thanks paul um uh with the third pick the chrome lacrosse club picks jt giles harris i think a number of us thought that maybe this would be td erland so a surprise here you go defense what took you to jt we had a curveball thrown at us today with uh, uh thomas rigney um having some outstanding opportunities uh, in the Army, and we just had to make a late decision. What exactly do you see him bringing to your defense there? Uh, he, he's good at everything, and um, you know, I, I think he could be an on-ball guy, an off-ball guy. Uh, his stick is incredible. Um, I, I really like, he picks off so many passes, and you know, his toughness and his ability to guard big guys, little guys. Um, we're really happy to have him, honestly. Un understandably, uh, why there? Uh, at Duke, he guarded the other team's player that they really couldn't live without. That was his assignment each week and still is. What do you think it'll be in the PLL? I think he's a day one starter. Um, so he's got obviously this knee. Chrome's got this need. I think the other thing for them with Mike Manley just getting a little bit kind of older, you know, now you kind of slot him in as that number one defenseman of the future. So maybe there's a little bit of buffer with Manley who doesn't have to cover the, the number one guy right away, uh, but he's certainly going to be projected for that, you know, in the, in the very near future. We'll see how Nat St. Loren uh, reacts to this news. And really, no team has been close, uh, closer to the championship than Redwoods. Their head coach, Nat St. Loren, both seasons so far, they've lost in overtime in the playoffs to the eventual champion Whipsnakes. So Nat, the fourth overall pick is now yours.
Uh, how's everybody doing? With the fourth overall pick, the Redwoods Lacrosse Club select TD Erland at the University of Denver. Most successful faceoff man in NCAA history. How do you see this changing your team there with the Redwoods? Uh, we, we feel he's so dynamic and, and he's done it at different stops along the way in his college career. And he's just tough, you know, wrestling background, hard nosed, blue collar, you know, Western New York kid. And, uh, you know, we've been very close, as we all know. It's been well documented. And um, we feel like the biggest area we needed to address was face off. And we think picking uh, one of the best ever out of college across was a, was a great start. Ron, you picture the Redwoods, a highly successful team anyway, with TD Erland, and what do you see? Well, I think, first of all, Nat's in the run. Huge sigh of relief yeah. in terms of seeing JT Giles Harris, just because I don't think that was somebody that was maybe projected, you know, for the for the Redwoods. This fills the only really gap that they have. You know, you you said it, they've lost the last two years by the to the eventual champ by one goal. This is the only position that isn't, you know, elite. Um, so the fact that they now have TD in this roster, you know, they have got to have their eyes on the championship. Let's go ahead and take it to the big board as we are halfway through the first round. Teat to Atlas, Sowers to Water Dogs, TD Erland just now to Redwoods, and JT Giles Harris, the best close defender in this class, to Chrome, the highest rated player, according to Ryan Boyle, out of Virginia, the LSM. Jared Connors. Chris Bates can have any one of those players he would like. His archers have established themselves as one of the best teams in the PLL. Now their clear goal is to catch the Whip Snakes. Chris Bates, time to make the fifth overall selection. With uh, fifth overall selection, the Archers Lacrosse Club take Jared Connors, a uh, long stick midfielder from uh, University of Virginia. 6'5, 215, disruptive presence on defense. Also an asset on transition to offense. Uh, I know you had some thoughts of, of offense here, of helping your O with the fifth pick. Tell us about your thought process to going to Connors. Uh, frankly, we're a little surprised he was available. We talked about it today, it being a possibility, and just feel like he's, he's too much of a talent, too disruptive, as you, as you say, to, to you know to, to not pick. You know, we feel like he's, he's a foundation cornerstone guy who can can really support, you know, we're strong at, at long stick with Scott Ratliff, but we just got stronger with, with the combination of them both up top. Ryan, we've all seen the difference, and the coaches have too, that Michael Earhart makes for the Whip Snakes. Some influence there? I think so. I mean, look at the, just a prototypical uh, LSM at the professional level, six foot five, two fifteen. So he fits that that bill uh, specifically. But with only Scott Ratliff on their roster, you know, and now adding Connors, now that is that provides some depth. That was an area that I thought they would address. And and talk about a defensive overhaul when you look mm. at the Archers' defense. It is not going to look anything like the last couple of years. Oh, the Chaos uh, have been strong in their first two seasons. They were in the first seed, or they earned the first seed in the playoffs two years ago. Remember, they reached the title game last summer. Andy Towers has five picks in the first three rounds. Andy, your first one is right here at six. Uh, with the sixth pick in the draft, the Chaos Across Club select attackman Mac O'Keefe from Penn State. The most prolific goal scorer in the history of Division I lacrosse. He's an exceptional shooter. Number of options I know you liked, Andy. What tipped the scale to Mac O'Keefe? Well, the last time I checked, whoever scores the most goals wins the game. And we're talking about the most prolific goal scorer in college across history that can score in a variety of ways, that has an unbelievable comfort level in the two-man game. His box background, we know uh, he comes from great genes. And frankly, he fits into what we want to do schematically. We think he's a step in right away, extra man player. His ability to, again, to play in the two-man game. He's an, he's an underrated passer for a guy that's such an incredible goal scorer. He's an underrated passer. And quite frankly, I think he's the best shooter on the planet with his left hand. And so what's not to like? I think he's an immediate impact player. And we're looking to get guys that we think can dress for us every game. And uh, based on all our respective due diligence, Mac O'Keefe checks every box and more. Mac O'Keefe as a member of that chaos offense. Your I first thought. I love the fit. And, and I'm thinking of that box midfield, that second unit they rolled out, right? And Kevin Buchanan retires. They have this open gap on the left side. And now you just insert Mac O'Keefe. 
You know, Coach Towers just talked about his comfort with the, with the two-man game, and now the range. Sometimes that unit gets a little tight, kind of a little scrunch, very inside heavy. Now with O'Keefe floating the outside, that, that is borderline unguardable. It's a fun thought Oh, initially to think about what he might bring. That's going to be a fun unit to watch, for sure. To that offense, as long as you're not trying to defend them. I would wonder a little bit about being susceptible in transition, mm. but if the ball's in the back of the net, as he said, you don't have to worry about it. Well, if there's one coach uh, who has a good defense and who's drafting from a position of strength, two-time defending champion Jim Stagnita of the Whip Snakes. Jim, you've kept the integrity of your roster intact throughout this offseason like you did for last year as well. Time to add another one here at number seven. At number seven, uh, the Whip Snakes select Connor Kirst from Rutgers University. When it comes to middies in this class, uh, you, you've got two very good ones to pick from between Connor Kirst and Doc Sakin. Uh, why Connor instead of Docs? It, it was splitting hairs, honestly. Um, I've known, you know, I've known Connor since he was a kid, and uh, you know, I, I I know how much he loves lacrosse. Uh, I think he's going to be a terrific professional. Um, I, you know, you you want people who live lacrosse and. And he has done that and, and continues to do that. And I think he'll do that for us. And he's, you know, he is a big, strong, he's a handful when he dodges. And he sees the field really well. And for someone his size, he's really athletic. So um, and not that, you know, not that Docs isn't, but I, it was a tough decision. But we, you know, we feel like Connor will be a great fit for us. And, uh, you know, I really like his, his skill set. Ryan, it's hard to say that the Whips needed anything on offense, but Connor Kirst uh, is a nice plug in there. They, they do need some depth at the midfield position, and Kirst was my number one midfielder for a lot of the reasons that Coach Stagnita just brought up, but very underrated passer. And you think about this Whip Snakes roster, uh, some of the shooters they have on the team, and specifically Channon Chuck on the outside, and then Carlson on the inside. So, you know, uh, uh, Kirst is going to get a lot of short stick matchups. So his ability to dodge and shoot off of that, or if he draws that slide, then distribute accordingly. He's a, a really nice piece here to this offense. Right back to where we started. Atlas began this by selecting Jeff Teed of Cornell. They're back to close it out with the pick they acquired from Cannons in that Paul Rabel trade. Ben Rubior, go ahead. With the eighth overall pick, the Atlas Lacrosse Club selects Doc Aiken, University of Virginia, midfield. Well, as soon as Connor Kirst went off the board, you knew it wouldn't take long for Docs Aiken to be next. Uh, quite a story became Virginia's career leader for goal scored by a midfielder. Transferred to Villanova last year with the intention of playing football. Came back to Virginia. He's been strong in the second half. What do you see him providing to your offense? I think he's a big, strong, tough athlete. Um, you know, his, his career numbers speak for themselves. Um, you know, I, I don't think he had the fastest start this season, but he's been playing well as of late. And uh, and anyway, I think he's a I think he's a guy that can help us between the arcs. I think he can put a lot of pressure on the defense, and uh, we're excited about him. Jeff Teague, Doc Aiken in round one. Ben is building something offensively. Then uh, the thing you also got to just point out is this is a guy that's been in big games, so he, he's a gamer in terms of winning at the absolute highest moments at the collegiate level. So he is not going to be shy of any sort of moments in the PLL. All right, let's take a peek at what just happened here. The first eight selections in round one. Offense heavy. Offense one and two. And then also we close it out with attack in Mac O'Keefe and a pair of midfielders, the top two in this class. Connor Kirst goes to the Whip Snakes and Docs Aiken out of Virginia to Atlas. Tonight, the PLL is pleased to bring you a special offer from presenting partner Champion. You can pick up your phone now and scan the QR code on the screen to unlock a 15% discount on exclusive PLL Champion sweatshirts. It's only here for a limited time, so don't miss your chance to rep the new PLL Champion gear today. First round is history. The players that went were terrific, but lots of high-level talent left. Expect to hear a lot of these names come off the board here as we begin the second round. Two of the eight coaches you see behind us will be extra busy this round. Half of the eight picks belong to either Ben Rubio and Atlas or Andy Towers and Chaos. Here's how it lays out. The Redwoods and Water Dogs do not own selections in round two because of prior trades. Atlas and Chaos will be active. This is the first we will see the Cannons show up as they're about to select for the first time. 
Ryan, they already acquired two of the biggest names in the sport, making a trade in the offseason for Paul Rabel and also drafting Lyle Thompson, number one in the entry draft. What stands out about the way he's building his roster? I think two things. Number one, he just valued proven professional players over draft picks. So, you know, traded away the one pick for Rabel, traded another one away. So he's only got uh, two picks. And then the other thing is players that have history with the Cannons. So clearly he wants to build that culture from day one. Hey, Sean Quark uh, was with us here, made 18 picks for the expansion draft earlier in the winter. He's ready now to jump in and make the ninth overall pick of the college draft. Sean, go ahead. Good evening, gentlemen. At number nine, the Cannons Lacrosse Club select Jack Kilty, defenseman from Notre Dame. He's been terrific as the leader of that defense there in South Bend. They've been near one of the better defenses in the country up to this point of the season. What took you to defense right away? You know, we strongly believe that Jack is a number one cover guy. Uh, he's exceptional on ball, but his IQ off ball is really proven to be strong. Uh, has done tremendous in the ACC and against other top opponents in the country this year. And right now we go back to the Atlas for each of the next two picks. In round one, they took Jeff Teat and Dox Aiken. Ben, who's on your mind here at 10? Uh, with the 10th pick, the Atlas Lacrosse Club selects Jake Carraway, attack Georgetown University. Lots of offense. Jeff Teat to Dox Aiken to Jake Carraway. Scoring machine for the Hoyas, the all-time leading scorer at that school. How does he fit into what you're building there on offense? Jake, Jake has, um, I, I mean, he's had a very nice college career. He's a kid that I coached when he was in high school. Uh, I know him well. I think he has great range on his shot. Um, and I think he's a guy that can, he can dodge, he can play off ball, and uh, he can stretch a defense a little bit with his shooting. Led the Big East in scoring last year and also is doing so this year. Right back to you, Ben, with number 11, a pick you acquired by trading Ryan Brown to the Water Dogs back in March. Yes. Um, the Atlas Lacrosse Club selects Danny Logan, short stick defensive midfield, Denver University. Interesting pick because I think a lot of people believe that Ryan Terfenko would be the first short stick D-Midi off the board. What did you like about Danny's game more than Ryan's? Uh, this it, it wasn't a comparison between those two. I think I think Terrafenko is an exceptional player. Um, Danny Logan for me is a guy that uh, that I think plays great team defense. Um, I think he's extremely tough. Uh, he's a three-time captain at the at Denver University. I think he's Tierney's only ever three-time captain. So um, anyway, I think that speaks for itself. Uh, I think he's a competitor and excited to see how he fits in this defense. Atlas, four picks in the first 11. Ryan, some of the biggest names in college across the past couple of years are now Bulls. Yeah, and, and you look at that and just the attack is, I think, that something that jumps out. You know, when I was talking to Coach Rubior, you know, it was kind of like, we're going to get at least one kind of franchise attack. And it was kind of like, oh, where, where are you heading here? And so <laughs> there you can kind of see his vision. You got Teat and then Law at X and then Caraway, the big shooter. So they complement each other very well. Cloutier and Cockerton, you know, maybe on the outside looking in in terms of, like, are they going to run out of the box? How do you use those pieces? And then the insertion of Docs Aiken, a lot of athletes in the midfield. And then short stick defensive midfield was a specific area of need. So he shored that up by, got, by getting Danny Logan. You know, Terrafenko I had maybe rated a little bit higher. But again, sp splitting hairs, Danny Logan is an, is an excellent player. Somebody you can plug in right away. Brings a lot of toughness, a lot of leadership. He's a great pick in that position. You know, the coaches are thinking about the best available right now. So let's go ahead and take a look there as well. The 11 selections in. Ryan Terrafenko right at the top of the list. Someone's going to get a nice midi there in Tanner Cook as well. And back to Ohio State for Trey LeClaire. We expect to hear his name called sometime soon as well. Tim Sudan of Chrome surprised us by taking a defender, JT Giles Harris, at number three. Tim, the 12th pick is next. Okay, in the 12th pick, um, the Chrome Lacrosse Club takes Ryan Terrafanko, uh, short stick D Mitty, Ohio State. On cue, highly respected, versatile, relentless playmaker all over the field. How do you plan on using him, Tim? We're going to use him at both ends of the field for sure. Um, I, I think when, when you talk about a warrior, this is the guy. And he fits right into my personality. And we never thought in a million years he was going to fall to 12, but he did. And that's how these things work out. And I'm super excited to have him. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
works out for you, you know, and, and I, I, I'm excited. Hey, surprise, happy, and excited. Good things to be on draft night. Archer's up next. Chris Bates selected Jared Connors at five. Chris, time now for number 13. With the 13th pick, the Archer's Lacrosse Club take Trey LeClaire from Ohio State. Became the Buckeyes' all-time leading scorer this year, and now he's averaging over two goals per game this season. He's scheme-diverse, Chris. He can play attack or midi. What are your plans for him? Well, I think for us, you know, he'll, he'll fit right in, right? I mean, we'll likely bring him from the box, and, and he's just got a, a, a you know, a multidimensional skill set, right? He can obviously shoot shoot the ball like like anybody, um, but I think he also sees the field well. He's going to look great in, in our two-man, and, you know, he hasn't seen a short stick in a few years. I think he can, uh, you know, he can certainly create against a short stick, and, and with that size, uh, and athleticism, I think he's going to give give some teams some matchup problems. Nice big body to set picks there for, for Tommy Schreiber as well. Now back-to-back -back selections coming for Chaos and Andy Towers. Andy, let's get started with 14, a picky game from Redwoods last spring in that Miles Jones-Sergio Salcedo trade. Uh, with the 14th pick, the Chaos Across Club select face-off man Kyle Gallagher from Notre Dame. Kyle Gallagher at Notre Dame was also terrific as a face-off man at Penn. I know you lost Tommy Kelly earlier in the offseason, so what does that do to the mix there at that position for you? Well, it hurt to lose Tommy Kelly. We loved him. Uh, he's one of the world's best players. Uh, but we were fortunate to pick up Max Adler in the MLL draft, and certainly we understand that uh, it's important to have uh, competition every single position and we have a ton of confidence in Austin Henningsen who's also on our roster but the fact that Kyle Gallagher is proven at the highest level against the best players it has been an absolute dominating force made him uh, irresistible frankly we really had a lot of interest in picking him up at six but right. we rolled the dice a little bit and uh, and can't believe how fortunate we feel to be able to get him here at uh, 14. Held his own against T.D. Erlin in college. You earned a lot of respect for that. This is a combo pick, Andy, because the next spot is also yours. Uh, with the 15th pick, the Chaos Across Club select midfielder from University of North Carolina, Tanner Cook. Chris Gray getting most of the attention, Andy, for the high-scoring Tar Heels, but Cook also scoring at least one goal in the first 11 games. What made you go to Chapel Hill with this selection? You know, Joe Bresch is a good friend. I have a ton of respect for his evaluation. And when we did our due diligence on Tanner Cook, uh, everything that we were concerned about, being a positive locker room presence, uh, it being somebody that's out for the team success and better everything else. You know, his size and athleticism is undeniable. His IQ is undeniable. Uh, his box across background and his Canadian background fits in perfectly with everything that uh, you know, we're doing schematically. Uh, this guy's a home run for us. It played for Brody Merrill there in Canada at the Hill Academy, just like Jeff Teat, the first overall pick. Now, the Whip Snakes have hit in round two before finding versatile Mitty Brad Smith two years ago. Jim Stagnita, the 16th selection, is up next. With the 16th selection, the Whip Snakes will take Ryan Tierney, attackman, Hofstra University. CAA Rookie of the Year in 2017. He's only gotten better from there. Unbelievable highlights this year. Hofstra's all-time leading score, also the all-time leading score in the CAA. Ridiculous what he's doing this season at that level, Jim. How do you think it translates to the PLL? Well, I think he's unbelievably creative and dynamic. Um, again, coach's son, uh, a lacrosse rat, and the thing that I love about him is he continues to get better. He's gotten better every year in college, and I think he's going to continue to uh, to improve. And he's, he's a dynamic player. I think he is somebody who will complement our lineup very well. Round two started on defense out of Notre Dame, Jack Hilty, then back-to-back -back Buckeyes in the middle, Terrafinko and LeClaire, and it ended with the Whip Snakes going Ryan Tierney attack. Remember, they got Dox Aiken in the first round. Also in the first round, Chrome selected JT Giles Harris, defenseman out of Duke, and that really started something, a theme we're still feeling. Yeah, that, that's the chain reaction. That, that started everything. So once that occurred, then the Cannons took Kilty at nine. So if you start kind of pulling the thread, JT Giles Harris at three, Kilty at nine. I thought maybe JT uh, Giles Harris would fall to that. And then you saw all the guys in the second round were like, wait, this guy's available? Like, 
we knew some guys were going to fall potentially and kind of in their laps, but it's like, wait, I thought I had to take Gallagher at six. You know, Connor Cook, or Tanner Cook, rather, he might have been the top ten. So a lot of those guys happened because of the chain reaction at three and nine specifically. Surprise, and we're all reacting just like the two of us up here when that happened at number three. We're just halfway through. Stay with us. The third round is next. This is the 2021 PLL College Draft presented by Champion. So five straight goals. Williams does it again. Scores! 2021 season brings with it another chance to take down the champs. This offseason brought forth an historic merger. Two leagues have combined, and one of the original teams of professional lacrosse has emerged with its own championship history. Led by blockbuster offseason trades, 2021 is poised to show a level of lacrosse that's never been seen. Meet the best players in the world and the long-awaited arrival of an icon. This summer, the PLL is bringing you back into the action. 11 cities, eight teams, one champion. Can't wait to get it going. The PLL will play in 11 cities this summer, and tickets for the first five weekends are now on sale, with the second half of the season going on sale in the coming weeks. Sign up to receive updates regarding ticketing availability at PremierLacrosseLeague.com. Welcome back to the 2021 PLL College Draft presented by Champion. Before we resume the selections with round three, Ryan, let's update the team needs here. Yeah, you look at these three squads. The one I really want to hone in on here is, is the Water Dogs you know, in search of that close defenseman. You know, I got to imagine, like a lot of coaches in the second round, that Coach Copeland is looking at this and saying, I have a lot more options than I thought I was going to have. So only two close defensemen have been taken off the board thus far. So kind of more, more options at his disposal. Eight more picks coming up here in round three, a pair belonging to Andy Towers in chaos. Atlas up again now with the first pick of round three, their fifth selection already tonight. Ben Rubior, go ahead. With the 17th pick, the Atlas Lacrosse Club selects Peter Durth, midfielder, Syracuse University. First three-time captain in Syracuse history, went from a goal-scoring midi to a defensive one. What does he potentially have that you think your team needs? Yeah, I, I mean, he's he's a heck of an athlete, and uh, I think he's got a lot of speed and strength. And uh, anyway, I, I feel like if there's a place to have depth on your team, I feel like short stick defensive midfield is it. Um, I think he's a guy that can also push it in transition, as you see there on the screen. And uh, he's obviously a leader, three-time captain, a uh, great kid. I got a, had a chance to coach his brother and excited to work with him. Third short stick D midi off the board. We haven't seen Andy Copeland since he selected Michael Sowers with the second overall pick. They traded their second rounder for Ryan Brown in March. Andy, time now for the 18th pick. So with our third round pick, pick number 18 overall, the Water Dogs have decided to trade that pick to the Archers Lacrosse Club in exchange for defenseman Eli Gobrecht. So Eli Gobrecht, a pick Chris Bates made early in the entry draft last year, a regular on defense in the bubble. Ryan, your thoughts? Well, first of all, it's about time we had a trade. But uh, on top of that, you know, we said that the Water Dogs had a need at close defense, and they just solved it. All right, uh, Chris Bates, we just saw you. We're going to bring you back now to make that 18th pick you just traded for. So with the 18th pick, the Archers Lacrosse Club take Jeff Trainer from University of Massachusetts. Stats don't really tell the whole story with this one. Every coach we talked to, Chris, had something positive to say about Jeff Trainer. What made him so well respected? He's just the jack of all trades. He's an old school midi that, that gets to the front of the net. He can shoot it with both hands. He plays on the wings of face offs. Um, you know, he plays defense. He's just a, a tough nut, and I think he's going to fit really well. A lot of offense via this draft coming the way. Chris Bates and the Archer. Sandy Towers has made three selections already. He's back for the 20th pick here in round three, acquired via the Matt Gaudet trade last year. Andy? Uh, that is, uh, that's very interesting. With the 19th pick, the Chaos Across Club is going to pick Jared Bernhardt, attackman from Maryland. Okay, here we go. Leads the nation in goals per game. The combination of athlete productivity has just been awesome this year. However, as we talked about at the top of the show, he does plan to play Division II college football next year and would like to make it to the NFL the following year. So if he follows that route, he will not, or you will not have his rights there, Andy. So walk us through your thought process here. 
Uh, I'm willing to roll the dice in that situation. You know, you're talking about a guy that has the potential to be uh, the MVP of the PLL in the years to come. And, you know, quite frankly, I, I hope that he succeeds in his goal to make the NFL. It wouldn't surprise me at all. He's an unbelievable athlete. And uh, on the chance that he doesn't, the hope is that we get him in our uniform, we get him in our locker room. The kid's a proven winner. He's an unbelievable player. And we felt like uh, this was the point in the draft that it was worth the risk on selecting a player that might not be able to play because he is just that good. And it also speaks to our comfort level on the balance and the depth at every position that we have right now. Ron, you said at the top of the draft you, you thought this would happen. Jared Bernhardt to the chaos round three. Well, and the timing, I, I think, is most of note. And, and I'm not just saying this. You could come look at it. I, I had Jeff Trainer pegged at the chaos at that pick. Um, and you heard, uh, you know, Coach Towers say, interesting, you know, that that <laughs> trade occurred. You know, I'm wondering, truly, I'm wondering if Trainer was the last guy that he had slotted as a potential rostered player. Mm. And then once that pick was made, it's like, okay, well, I might as well go for Bernhardt. Andy? Uh, I think RB has paid the big dollars for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll take it as a compliment here for uh, for the analyst to my left. Chrome back on the clock now already with JT Giles Harris and Ryan Tarafinko. Tim Sudan, go ahead with the 20th pick. Okay, pick 20. Chrome Lacrosse Club takes Justin Anderson, uh, midfielder, North Carolina. Mature midfielder, 25 years old, two-year Mormon mission between high school and starting his freshman year at North Carolina gives him those extra years. Strictly lacrosse-wise, I know he's an interesting character because of his background. What drew you to him? I think, you know, he plays in a really strong league, and, you know, you watch you watch film on him. He's getting a pull. Um, he, he can play defense. Like, he's a multifaceted guy, super athletic, fast. Um, shoots really well. I, I think he would fit right in with us. All right, Tim, thank you. Chris Bates now on deck and waiting for what will be the Archers' final pick of the night at 21 here of round three. Chris? So the Archers Lacrosse Club will take Connor Gaffney, face-off uh, midfielder from Lehigh University. Interesting career, all Patriot League as an underclassman. Set Patriot League records for face-off wins as a junior. Now he's sitting behind the number one face-off man in the country, Mike Sisselberger. Uh, walk us through your face-off situation right now after this pick. Well, we, we just think Connor was is too good to pass up, frankly. I mean, he's, you know, his, his record speaks for itself. Um, you know, kind of a, a, a funky deal this year, right? I mean, he was out for three weeks, and, and in that position especially, it's tough to sort of catch up. So... Um, and he's going day in, day out against, you know, one of the, clearly the best kid in the country right now. So we feel like with the rules in the PLL and his history, his toughness, it's, it's just a, it's a no brainer. I think it's a great pick for us. He'll join Bones Kelly for competition in camp there at face off for the archers later this spring. Chaos back to make their fifth of six total picks. Andy, this is selection 22. With selection 22, the chaos across club is going to pick defenseman Kyle Thornton from Notre Dame. 6'1", 190, four years at Penn, Andy, before he transferred to Notre Dame, a regular on what's been the best defense in the ACC. You're already loaded on D with the chaos. How does he fit in? You know, again, we're looking to bring in leverage at every single position. Uh, we love the uh, intangibles of, of Kyle Ford. We love the fact that he is uh, a quarterback at that end of the field. We feel like any team in this league can use somebody that has a presence to get the players connected. And certainly he's proven in that aspect, and we're looking forward to him making an impact to training camp. And thank you. Jim Stagnita has been heavy offense so far. Connor Kirsten, round one. Ryan Tierney in the second. Jim, time for pick 23. Okay, with pick 23, the Whip Snakes select Colin Squires, uh, defenseman from the University of Denver. Jim, you have gone off my board. Fill us in uh, on Colin there playing for Tierney. The only thing I need to tell you is Billy Tierney tells me that the kid can play. He can play pole. He can play close. He knows how to play team defense. He's a tremendous athlete. Uh, he has covered uh, Gray and Sowers and, um, you know, in the best in the Big East. 
Uh, we, as you know, we like guys who have multiple skill sets. We need someone who can play pole and can play close um, to give us that depth and who can cover. And, uh, you know, I had another, when I was calling around, a, a number of other coaches unsolicited had mentioned him um, as, a, as someone they thought that it would be a, a really nice compliment to us. So um, I'm glad he was under the radar. And, you know, when someone like Billy Tierney tells you they have somebody that can really play defense, it's hard to uh, it's hard to argue with that. Uh, defense uh, looking awfully strong there for the Whips. Nat State Laurent back for his second pick. He got TD Erland, if you remember, back at four of the first round. Nat, go ahead. Uh, with the 24th pick, the Redwoods Lacrosse Club pick Charlie Bertrand, University of Virginia midfield. Really thought this player would go off the board earlier, Nat. Two-time national champion and also D2 player of the year twice at Merrimack, now fitting in very well to the Virginia offense. D2 to ACC, kind of seamless. How about the jump to the PLL, Matt? I think he's going to be great. You know, he's rangy. He's a lefty. We need, we need a lefty. We've got Joe Walters, one of the all-time greats right there. And, uh, you know, we lost Lebo uh, to the expansion draft, so we really needed to look to bring in a guy and he'll fit right in. You know, we've got some great size at the midfield with a couple of our other players, and now we'll be able to bring in a talent like him who's won at different levels. And the thing we loved about him is he's gotten different roles, right? At Merrimack, he was the man, and, and he had the ball on the stick all the time. And at UVA, they had so many great players on the field with him. He's proven that he doesn't necessarily always need the ball on the stick to score or to help his team play. And in the PLL, that, that's crucial uh, with the flow of an offense and balancing the field. So we're pretty excited that he fell to us in this spot. Round three now, history, Ryan, what jumps out to you? I think the archers of those two picks, you know, they get their kind of jack of all trades, Swiss Army knife trainer, and then Gaffney to kind of shore up that face-off position. And then the chaos have got to be thrilled that they got Thornton there. They need kind of a defensive organizer, communicator type. So really good, perfect, uh, a perfect fit there. Not quite done here with the 2021 PLL College Draft presented by Champion. Round four is coming up next. With our final pick, the Redwoods are going to take Tim Troutner, goalie out of High Point University. For Carl to the net, Troutner <laughs> keeps us playing. With our final pick, the Chrome Lacrosse Club selects Connor Farrell from CW Post. And Connor Farrell wins a face-off and buries it. <laughs> Uh, yes, looking for late round success with recent success stories on their mind. Redwoods will select twice. Nat St. Laurent, as you've seen, has done well in round four before. Cannons are up with Sean Cork. Can uh, Sean, this is the 25th overall pick. With the 25th pick, the Cannons Lacrosse Club select Stephen Rafis, attack from Syracuse. Bringing us to the 26th selection, back to the Atlas and Ben Rubior. With the 26th selection, the Atlas Lacrosse Club selects Gerard Arceri, Penn State, faceoff. Two-time All-Big Ten, Penn State record holder in faceoff wins and ground balls. Andy Copeland of the Water Dogs is back for 27. With our fourth round pick, the Water Dogs are going to select Ethan Walker, attackman out of Denver. One of the best shooters in college lacrosse the last four years, Denver's all-time leader in points scored. 28 belongs to Tim Sudan in Chrome. At the 28th pick, the Chrome Lacrosse Club is going to take Jackson Morrill, attack Denver. Before he went to Denver, Tim, second all-time leading scorer at Yale. Only family with three generations of three Hall of Famers, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, all in the Hall of Fame. 29, Redwoods, Nat St. Laurent. The Redwoods Lacrosse Club select Jamie Trimboli out of Syracuse University, midfielder. Impact player since his freshman year at the Q's, two-time captain for the Orange. 30, Andy Towers is back one more time. A.T. Number 30, uh, with the 30th pick in the draft, the Chaos Lacrosse Club select attackman Ryan Smith from Robert Morris. Wonderful inside presence there at RMU, all-time leading point scorer there. He set that record earlier in April. Whip Snakes, Jim Stagnita with number 31. With number 31, the Whip Snakes select Nick Grill, defenseman, University of Maryland. 
Brother of Water Dogs defenseman B.J. Grill transferred to Maryland for the 20 season. Did a very good job on Connor Kirst against Maryland twice this year. Final pick belongs to Nat St. Laurent and the Redwoods. The Redwoods Lacrosse Club select Charlie Leonard faceoff University of Notre Dame. From contributor to starter to sharing his job with Kyle Gallagher, uh, another fighting Irish player selected here to close out the draft as Nat St. Laurent has had a lot of success with former Notre Dame players. That'll do it, Ryan. What's your headline for round four? I think two pioneers picked in the, the fourth round, two members of the uh, Denver University team, Ethan Walker there and Jackson Morrill, formerly of Yale national champions, so a lot of talent coming out of that program today. Ryan, I'll see you again right after the break. We want to say goodbye and thank you to all eight of our PLL head coaches for their picks and also the explanations and the insight as to what they were thinking with each one. We'll be back with more from the 2021 PLL College Draft presented by Champ. Tonight, the PLL is pleased to bring you a special offer from presenting partner Champion. Pick up your phone now and scan the QR code on your screen to unlock a 15% discount on exclusive PLL Champion sweatshirts. It's only here for a short time, so don't miss your chance to rep your new PLL Champion gear today. 32 picks are history, Ryan. Your top takeaway from everything we've seen and heard. I'm seeing a lot of team needs and a lot of those boxes get checked. So I think the coaches' backs are going to be a little tired from patting themselves on it <laughs> and patting themselves on the back. So uh, I think a lot of these people feel like they're kind of right there in the hunt. You know, starting with the Redwoods, loss of the whips by a goal. Each of the last seasons they come out of this with TD Erlin was that the one position that they felt like they didn't have an elite player. So um, like I said, a lot of coaches feeling pretty good about themselves tonight. See you at Gillette Stadium near Boston early June for the start of the season. Just to remember, the PLL season kicks off there Friday night, June 4th at Gillette Stadium with the Cannons making their PLL debut. And on Saturday, Whip Snakes take on Chaos in a 2020 championship rematch. All games this season are available on Peacock.